Okay, all right. Uh, so House Vagrant, lots of money, ready to blood the enemy. Okay, so uh, that means we are on our next faction. So our next faction is the Acre Corporation. So Acre Corporation, uh, last time they can subtract up to 12. Yes, the Psychic Assassin was moved. You can see it right here. Uh, so Acre Corporation, uh, last time they rolled uh, rolled for their commodities broker. They can subtract up to 12 for another purchase. Let's see if they're ready to buy one. They get uh, some faction credits. House Acre, they're going to go up to 10, I think. Yeah, because they have a party machine and a researcher. So they go up to 10. Uh, this is progress two on their peaceable kingdom because they're not attacking. They are instead going to buy an asset. Buy asset. Nice. All right. So they're going to buy, uh, they're going to buy a commodities broker on Demnoff. This sounds familiar. <laughs> so, uh, like, like house, uh, like house Fornax, uh, it looks like they're going to be buying a commodities broker. So buy commodities broker on dim enough. Dem no, no, there we go. They can get a maximum of a uh, 10 credit reduction because it costs, uh, costs 20. So it costs 10 fact creds instead of 20. So they get a good discount. So let's go ahead and take that away. So that means they are down to exactly nothing. They've spent all their money, but now they have a commodities broker. So let's go ahead and add them. Acre, Acre is going to be interesting because they have not really made like, they haven't really made like a, a strong stance on like what's going to divide the, what's going to divide the faction turn. And this was very, very much by design. Yes, they rolled 12, but you can't reduce it by more than half. So what's interesting is, and, and this is very much by design, um, the, the divide is going to come between the like revolutionary factions of the UPC and Vagrant against the empire. I'm guessing next turn will be the declaration of war. And then it'll be interesting to see where the corporates land. Right. And, and I'm actually, what's interesting is that I no longer consider, and this is, this is a good, this is a good, uh, yeah, there's the neutrals, right? Like the CHR is a bit neutral. Um, they technically are part of the empire, but they could be swayed either way. Um, and the red dogs, I used to think of the red dogs as a criminal, um, faction, but I really don't think that they are. I think that they are a weird, like crime slash corporate faction. They're doing some really interesting things with their role play. So I've started to think of them as something, something else. The, the CHR, the CHR is, yeah, right? Like the Deathless are a corporate for sure. Um, the CHR isn't the UPC, not at all. No, the CHR does not believe in the downfall of the empire. The CHR is part of the empire. They're an unpopular religion, but they're gaining sway, right? That would be like saying um, that like uh, all Protestants in the Middle Ages were anarchists, right? Like that's not, that's not strictly the case. I'm sure some aspects of the CHR and the UPC line up, but don't, don't write the, don't write the CHR off as being like a pawn of the UPC or like basically the same faction. Um, if they want to militarize, sure. But that's a really good way to get the empire on their, on their back. Like we talked a lot about how the CHR is not a heresy yet. They're just like, listen, if you side with the UPC, CHR, and the high church finds out, that's how you all get excommunicated and start getting rounded up. And, like, that's how a religion becomes, like, officially illegal. So you got to be careful. You have some social currency now, but you could very easily lose it. Um, okay. So anyway, Acre. Acre. Come on, I owe you a commodities broker, Acre. Uh, and they are on uh, Demnoff. They're on the home world. Okay, there we go. Yeah, play nice, CHR. Your your shit is yeah. Your sign. Your you have to be careful that you don't end up being like a weird cult that everybody hates. Right now, that's your that's your thing. Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. So that's your jam. All right. So next up. Next up on the list, the great assemblage of the Houses Minor. So the Houses Minor, they're going to go next. 
And let's see what they do. So these ones, they're a little a little slower than they were last turn. And they're going to take the uh, buy asset action. But because they have an asset they can activate outside of their turn or, or within their turn order, uh, they're going to do that. So before they buy an asset, let me give them their money. How's this miner fucking rolling in money right now? It's only going to get more significant. Uh, the houses miner have. Do they have a party machine? Do you have a party machine? Houses miner. You do not. Okay, and nothing costs anything, right? Pre-tech manufacturer researchers. Okay, cool. All right. Big money. So you have twenty-one credits now. Not thirty-two, Adam. Use your hands. Okay. So they have twenty-one credits. They also there was also a lot of little um like exchanges of of money uh between the two turns lots of little like i give you a fat cred you give me a fat cred we're going to trade assets there was some purchases in between the turns which i thought was kind of cool um okay so 21 uh 21 faction credits makes sense you're going to buy something um so uh that means that before you buy uh they are going to they're going to activate their transit web so the transit web is a, a bit of an interesting one. So the transit web is, let me find the description of it. It's allowed, you can use it during other uh, other actions. Transit web, where are you? There it is. These facilities allow almost effortless relocation of all assets. For one fact cred, any number of non-starship cunning or wealth assets may be moved between any two worlds within three hexes of the transit web. This may be done freely on the owner's turn so long as the fee can be paid and using the ability doesn't require an action. And as we as we talked about in the in the corrections, you can only use this to move any given asset once. So you can't infinitely bounce it around. Um, but that's okay. They're doing that. So the transit web is going to move. Uh, they've got some brokers they need to move. So transit web uh, move. Let's see. Brokers. Uh, brokers from Tootham. <laughs> I like how everybody's just abandoning Tootham. They're just like, fuck this. To Dio Mikado. Dio Mikado. Okay. Move them to Takedo. All right, so let's see. Your houses miner, your commodities broker on Tootham is now on the uh, the homeworld of. <laughs> I like this. So the the commodities broker, they're on a tour. They're they're just these are like Eridani tax collectors, just making the tax collection tour. Time to go and see what the military is up to. Okay, so they're gonna do that. Uh, that costs them one fact cred, and then they're gonna buy their asset. So they're going to buy a, a transit web by another one. Um, now, the houses miner didn't specify where they were buying their transit web, but I, th I think, I think, let me take a look. I think, let me see. It has to be. That's right. That's what I was. That was gonna say. It has to be on Lovelace because it's a TL five. Yeah, that's that's why. Yeah. Okay. Um, it wasn't. I just I didn't write it down in my order, but yes, I remember talking to them about it. So they have to buy a transit web on Lovelace. So a new transit web costs them fifteen credits. However, last turn uh, they got a discount. Uh, right. They have the two manufacturers. So they have a discount of six. So buy transit web on Lovelace, six cred discount from the last turn um so that cost them 15 nine right oh yeah the one up here it doesn't really matter yeah um so discount nine fact creds okay so that cost them another another nine so that's 11 okay and then let's add that so transit web for the houses minor Pretty cool. More TL5. And that was on Lovelace. And then, as their last action, they're, uh, to finish their action, they're going to reactivate the transit web again. Move transit web. The new one. <laughs> Move the new transit web. 
the Lovelace Transit Web, uh, to Almori. Ooh, dangerous place for it to be. But hey, that's okay. Uh, that will help move some things around. Okay, so more more faction shit on Almori. A transit network created and moved to Almori. Ready to go, and that cost them one more one more uh, credit, bringing them down to ten. So let's let's take a quick look at what's on Almori right now. On Almori, most this this turns voted most important place in the universe. Uh, we have psychic assassins, two anti anti nobility demagogues, which I call assassination targets. Uh, the house's minor base of influence. Some space marines that are having some discipline problems. A labor demagogue, right? A UPC demagogue, anti-government anti demagogues. Another set of psychic assassins. And the seditionists that are embedded in the space marines. <sighs> On top of all that, a transit web. I suspect this transit web is going to be used next turn to, to draw some, some allies I, if I were a member of the Houses Minor, I would be having a conversation with the rest of the Empire about what to do about the Almori problem. So Almori is uh, Reticulum's homeworld. Uh, it was being defended by, or it is being defended by these uh, these Space Marines, but the UPC is starting to take them apart from the inside, or at least paralyzing their, their bureaucracy, not allowing them to fight. And that, that is the action of the Houses Minor. Okay, all right. So let's take a look at who's next. Next up are the uh, the Deathless. Next up are the Deathless Mercenary Company. Friends, friends of the Church. Last turn, they they attacked House Vagrant uh, on uh, on the um, on Tootham during the the Battle of Tootham. Uh, this time, they're going to use Asset Ability, and they are going to activate some of their assets. So what I love about what I love about these guys, what I love about the Deathless is when you watch them take actions, you kind of have to just guess at why they're doing it because they don't really act under their own motivation. They act under everyone else's. So it's like, okay, cool. Who paid them to do this? Why are they? Who is the secret master pulling the strings? Um, I think the Deathless are going to be really valuable for uh, for that kind of stuff in the future. So, uh, so Deathless, uh, they are going to activate the Extended Theater. Theater. Uh, let me give them some money first. Let me give these mercenaries some money. So, uh, let's see. The Deathless. You get five, I think. Deathless. Uh, yeah. Okay, so they got five, so that brings them up to eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay, so the Deathless get they got their their money. Uh so they're gonna move extended theater. Uh to move let me talk about extended theater, because we still are not, you know, hundred percent on what all these do. So let me read description. So extended theater. It's like where you can go see movies really late. These facilities allow for transporting assets long distances. As an action, any one non-starship asset, including itself, can be moved between any two worlds within two hexes of the extended theater at a cost of one fac cred. So extended theater costs them one fac cred. So let's go ahead and track that uh, on the tracker. It brings them down to 12. And they can move themselves, which is what they're going to do, uh, from Koshe to, uh, to Lovelace. Koshe to Lovelace, which means I think that works. Let me take a look. So Koshe is here, and Lovelace is two, two away. Okay. Now, extended theater, uh, do you – nope. Doesn't matter. You can move it. Okay, good. So I just want to make sure it wasn't a permissive one. If they tried to move their grav tank formation, that would be different. So this means Lovelace, this is home of House Triangulum, uh, now has uh, a, a Deathless Extended Theater, a collection from Crochet to Lovelace. Fantastic. Okay. So then they're going to activate Post Tech, Pause Tech Industries. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I bet you are. <laughs> All right, post tech industry two. And I think this is gonna get them some. This is gonna get them some uh, some credits here for the first one. So activate post tech industry. So let me take a look on the map here. Uh, post tech industry one activates, and that gives them. Let's see, post tech industry. Uh, rolls a d6 to generate fact creds. Okay. So they get. I'm gonna roll a d6. Here's the roll. Uh, I rolled a four to get one fact cred. All right, Deathless. So the Deathless go up to 13 again. Cool. What do you make, Deathless? What do you What do you make it? Like, is it machinery? Are these machine shops? I think they probably are. Uh, and then, because they're mercenaries, they can move stuff around. So they're going to move the post, the other post-tech industry. Yeah, right. Alcohol and bullets. Uh, okay, and they're gonna move their other one from Koshe to uh, to Thorg. Aw, look at that! You're bringing industry to Thorg. So, man, you really are the the Mad Max. There is a there is a bullet farm on Thorg now. Good. <laughs> so yeah, you're building combat robots and bullets and munitions, and now you're doing it on planet Thorg. I like it. Good. Okay. All right. So that's the other one. They they move it using their uh, their turn. So we rolled uh, rolled a four. Rolled a four. Gained one fact cred, and then moved with mercenary ability to Thorg. So in system move, and now they're a little bit more spread out. Good. All right. Deathless. Fantastic. I'm gonna guess if I had to speculate, I'm gonna guess with all this money. Uh, the Deathless are going to purchase something or they're going to try to expand their influence and build a, a BOI. That would be my guess. That's my thought. I mean, there's a real, there's a real chance that, that Thorg could be, uh, like populated. We could make it into a real planet, but who knows? I guess we'll see. Uh, all right. So the Deathless continue their, uh, their, their march forward, uh, after the, the relative drubbing of last turn. Uh, next up, speaking of Speaking of potential, potential uh, wild cards, uh, the Church of Humanity, repentant. Church of Humanity, repentant. They are uh, they are number ten on our list. Number ten on our list. Church of Humanity, repentant. And they are going to they're going to assign a new goal because they completed theirs last time. Good job not forgetting because after this it would cost you uh, you wouldn't have any goal for the turn. So Church of Humanity, repentant. Uh, oh, did I not record Vela's new goal? Let me look. Um, House Vela. House Vela. Yeah, no, they didn't give me a new goal. They can think on it, I guess. Oh, that's right. They did make it, and then they completed it right away. That's right. That's right. Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure we... Yeah, they got it, and they finished it. Yes, that's right. Expand influence. Yep. Okay, good. Perfect. So they weren't... It's not that they were waiting. They were, they were done. They're finished. Okay, anyway, so... Church of Humanity Repentant, uh, they would like to uh, take the Expand Influence one again. Right. Makes sense. That southern southern sector. Um, okay. And they are going to, on their turn, let's give them their money. So they're up to 10 now. These theocrats. Make it sure that they don't add or subtract anything let's take a quick look party machine okay they get an extra plus one so it brings them up to 11. all right theocrats what are you going to do survey says let's find out all right survey says it is they're going to use asset abilities okay all right so first of all Guess what? It's a covert transit net. I don't have to put that in all caps. Okay, covert transit network. So who are you? Who are you moving? Who are you moving, friends? They're gonna move. Uh, let's see. The demagogue from 0509. A priest of some variety, I imagine. To 04. 
4407 Yakia. Hmm. And they've actually given me something to read as well. Yakia. Okay. So the demagogue moves from 0509 to uh to Yakia. Let's see HR, where are you? Here we go. Demagogue from Kabina. Time to spread the word. Okay. All right. So the demagogue arrives in Yakia, uh, and the uh, the 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 RP that I I'm, I'm meant to read for you is uh, the Church of Humanity Repentant has dispatched a prominent preacher to Yakia. During their trip, they hope to mitigate some tensions between disenfranchised workers and local authorities, as well as advocate for the production benefits of including aliens in the workforce as a means of helping solve the labor crisis. So all that shit I said about how the Church of Humanity Repentant and the UPC might not be friends, that sounds like UPC rhetoric to me. And I like it. I like that it's like, yes, we must solve the labor, con the labor problem. Let's give jobs to these aliens. Aliens can work. That's true. That's true. But should they? I don't know. Do we want them touching our stuff? Hmm. Should they be taking jobs? The thing is, we, we have the rhetoric of this is the opposite. The labor crisis is that we have not enough people and too many jobs to fill. Uh, we are we are at a this is like post this is post like um, like post plague, right? Post downfall, right? This is we have too much work to do and not enough uh, not enough bodies because we ran out of. I mean, yeah, the damn aliens aren't taking our jobs. They're taking all the jobs because our slave labor force is dead. The problem we're going to run into is paying all these people because the economy has come to a horrible grinding stop. So that's cool. Uh, thank you, Church of Humanity Repentant. Let's put those aliens to work, especially, especially if they're horrifying possessor aliens that eat your emotions. Who said anything about paying the aliens? I'm pretty sure the, the Church of Humanity Repentant would want to pay them. I mean, I guess we could enslave them. That's a great idea, Church of Humanity Repentant. Let's do it. All right, the Trillion Ring. Trillion Ring is number 11 on our list. Similarly to last turn, uh, they are going to set their new goal. Uh, let's give them their money. So Trillion Ring gets five credits. Do they have anything special? Party machine, party machine, party machine. They get three more credits. <laughs> you know, if anybody knows how to party and has the machines to enable you to party, it's the Trillion Ring. Yep. I posted a really shitty meme yesterday in the Discord, and I feel... I don't feel bad about it. I feel good. It was a good, it was a good one. And it was in, it was in Trillion's favor. I hope everybody saw it. It was really stupid. Um, okay. So the Trillion Ring would like to get a new goal. They're going to expand their influence. Okay. All right. Good. Trillion Ring, expand influence. And on their turn, let's make a note. Expand influence. And they would like to, oh, interesting. Interesting. This is this is a we haven't seen this one yet. Oh, this is cool. Um so the trillion ring, the trillion ring is going to take action. I before E except after Z. Seize planet. Seize planet. This is this is the next step up from uh this is the next step up from from um uh, from building a base of influence, this is like becoming becoming the government of a planet, like becoming the owners of a of a world. Um, so this is happening on. Um, let's see, let's see if it's an imperial world. It doesn't have anybody else's uh, uh, planet. So let's take a look at this planet they're gonna seize. So this is a uh, Valen map sector zero 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 eight. This is Mona. Uh, Pavis. So let's take a look at, at Pavis. The current situation on Pavis. So what do we got? Zero, 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 eight. Okay, they're the only ones there. They've got a party machine on Pavis. 
Um, let's take a look at what Pavis is about. So the tags for this planet, which are, let's see, 0, 0, 0, 8, this guy. Uh, Mona. Oh, of course. <laughs> it's a TL4 plus planet. TL4 plus planet. Um, and uh, it is a breathable mix of cold to temperate, several million people. It has its own psionics academy and is currently a gold rush for precious materials. Totally makes sense that, that uh, yeah, and like SciTech and stuff. Yeah, this is good. This is a, a fairly good call uh, for the for the Chilean Ring. It technically does not belong to any Imperial house. Uh, the Empire might consider it part of the, M the Empire, but certainly it doesn't, no one house owns it. The Empire also has some pretty broad opinions about what makes something belong to them. Um, I, I, breaking news, breaking news, uh, breaking news. The, the trillion ring has just sent me, uh, on my, on my, my data pad here. The trillion ring has just sent me a, a statement. They would like to make a public statement about this move. The trillion ring, uh, through their representative says, Due to recent anti-Empire activity from the rogue psychic academy in the Pavis system, Trillian will be establishing a former government in Pavis, a formal government in Pavis. They will be educated of their responsibilities to the Empire and those exceptional few gifted with the grace of the Trillian Ring lifestyle. As the most organized presence within the region, the High Church, oh, this is good, the High Church has authorized the Trillian Ring to seize the academy and ensure the planet's continued security. So this is, this is a corporate move backed up by the high church now i haven't ratified this with the high church so i don't know if the high church has said to me personally that this is okay i would suggest if you were a prism investigator you would be reaching out to the high church for a statement on this asap but good work trillion ring you're going to try to seize this planet let's talk about what seize planet does so seize planet is special i'm going to read from the book and then i'm going to talk to you about my my personal notes for uh for seize planet so yeah, go ahead and just send your man Aesop Hines. Aesop Hines is on the case. Aesop Hines is on the floor. Um, so let me see here. Rulings. I've got a rulings document for this. Rules and clarifications. And I will talk to you about those as well. Okay. All right. So uh, go back to gameplay. All right. So the Seize Planet action, the Seize Planet action is a special action to allow you to become the official government of a uh, of a world. Um, this would be significant because if successful, this would make this would make Trillion Ring the only official government of two separate planets, which is pretty cool. Um, the golden the the golden state. Wait, that's golden state. That's California, isn't it? I mean, that it fits Trillion. You're California. Um, all right. So this action faction actions. Uh, seize planet. The faction seeks to become the ruling body of a world. The faction must destroy all unstealthed assets on the planet belonging to factions who oppose their attempt before they can successfully take control. If all the assets cannot be destroyed in one turn, the faction must continue the attempt next turn until successful or all their own assets on the planet have been destroyed. No other actions can be taken in the meanwhile. Once all resistance has been crushed, the attacker must maintain at least one unstealthed asset on the world for three turns. If successful, they gain the planetary government tag for the world. Three turns. Now, what's great is seize planet action. Normally, if there are people fighting you, you are locked in. All you can do is fight. All you can do is just blast away until you win or until you retreat. But there's nobody on this planet. This stupid planet doesn't have anyone protecting it. So good work, Trillion Ring. Just drop in your party machine and take this fucker over. So what this means is uh, I'm going to go ahead and mark seize planet progress. On Mo Mona or Pavis? Pavis, Mona. Is the planet called it's Mona? Okay. Just keep thinking about Roger, Roger Sterling's wife. Uh, okay, so Mona. Uh, and this is out of three. They need to maintain an asset on this planet for three turns. So I think this is turn zero, and it'll be the next three turns. And yes, please, dr drink. I went, too, I went too far. We went all the way around. Okay, all right. Cool. Seize planet, Mona, Pavis, no resistance. Begin the occupation. Nicely done. All right, Trillion Ring. Yeah, if you want to, 
So I'm going to go ahead and put this out there. If you want to, if you're successful here, Pavis, uh, Mona, Trillion Ring, you can rename the planet if you want to. You you let me know. Um, So you have to maintain it for, it says, once all resistance has been crushed, maintain at least one asset on the world for three turns. Since there was no resistance, yeah, I guess this is technically, this is technically like turn, it is technically turn one because this is the first turn and then there's two more after this because there was no resistance. Yeah, because it's after it's crushed. You're good. Okay, great. Cool, good work. Okay, good. Uh, two more factions. Two more factions. <laughs> Trillia, Trillia 10 too, because it works so well for Final Fantasy. Uh, so next up is the 14 Red Dogs Triad. They are number 12 this turn. And the 14 Red Dogs Triad, uh, I believe they need to expand. Uh, they need to set another, another goal. Uh, oh, we need to give them their money too. So Red Dogs, you get, you're up to eight now. Do the Red Dogs have a party machine? It's the one thing I'm gonna like, I'm gonna look to smooth, smooth off here. Yep, they have one. They have a party machine on Bora. This planet's too Bora. We need a party machine up here. Oh, drink, because I did, I did it again. Okay, so we get one more. Brings them up to nine. Uh, but they do have researchers, which brings them down to eight. Yeah. Okay. So it just stays the same. Okay. All right. So these folks, they're going to add a new goal to expand their influence. First few turns, lots of expanding influence. That makes sense. Um, so let's note that. Hold on. I'm going to confuse myself if I don't reschedule the sheet here. There we go. All right. So goal, expand influence. And they're going to buy an asset as their action yes yeah trillion got their money uh buy asset and they are going to buy they want to buy covert shipping on bora makes sense let's let's charge them for it so uh they already have stuff on bora they have a base of influence they can totally buy a, a new thing there so let's see how much it costs Covert shipping is when you want two characters to have sex, but you don't talk to anybody about it because you're embarrassed. Okay. Covert shipping uh, costs eight. Covert shipping costs eight. So that's red dogs. That's all their credits. It's going to come in with stealth. So red, red dogs triad. Uh, covert shipping. Comes in stealthed because it's a red dog and it's on Bora. Yeah. All right. Cool. The completely, totally legitimate government of uh, of of uh, Planet Honglu has expanded uh, onto Planet Bo has expanded its efforts on Planet Bora. Let's see what else is on Bora. It's like Bora Bora, but half as good. Um, let's see. Where are you, Bora? Looks like just the red dogs. Yeah. It's like a. It wouldn't surprise me at all if the Red Dogs like took this as a secondary planet, like the like the trail. Um, so let me let me see what Bora is about. Bora, where are you? It's like up here somewhere, right? Echo. Huh. Space Station Detroit. It's a shithole. That's right. That's right. It's a quarantine tomb world. <laughs> it's a TL1 frozen tomb world. Cool. I don't know what you're about, dogs, but ah, primo. Good good work. <laughs> Whatever you're doing, you're fucking doing it. You're doing it. And I I salute you. All right. So they did it. They bought covert shipping on Bora. God, it would suck. Everybody else is at home, like taking over the taking over the the home world and doing doing good work in the name of the Hong Lu people's revolution and then there's a base a party machine researchers and shipping like off doing other things in another planet like it's so good and everybody's so focused on Hong Lu that I'm pretty sure that the the universe at large 
Yeah, they don't know about whatever you're doing on Bora. Like that, I imagine, and obviously they have their own their own stuff uh, about Bora. They, th I imagine that's where the Red Dogs are doing their real work. That's where they're getting their shit done. Uh, let's uh, let's take a let's take a look real quick at um, the purchasing here, just to make sure that everything is uh, is good because it is a TL one homeworld. Um, I think they're okay to buy it uh, because of their faction. Oh, no, that's a good point. That is a good point. Um, they they normally, and I love this, this is great. So this is exactly the kind of thing. So it's still valid, but we can talk about why it's valid. Yes, you got it. Chat knows what's up already. So normally they would not be able to buy anything on this shithole, but through the magic of pre-tech research, pre-tech researchers allow them to buy cool shit elsewhere. Um, so yeah, that's cool. So pre-tech researchers, I'll read you the pre-tech researchers. As long as they're adequately funded, any world with pre-tech research is treated as level TL5 for buying cunning and wealth assets. TL5. There is a secret Red Dogs TL5 facility on the tomb world of Bora churning out cool shit. Yeah, secret pretech vaults. This is great. What's great about this is that every single every single one of these planets would be a fantastic place to set a whole campaign. I was saying that about Hong Lu. Like, you could play Blades in the Dark. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it when when we get the the cyberpunk when we get the cyberpunk hack of uh, of Blades in the Dark. I am going to run a one shot or like a three game thing on Hong Lu. I'm going to do it. It'll be fucking awesome. Yeah, 100%. Definitely going to do it. It'll be fun. There and you could and you could do this with so many of these planets. There's so many different like cool things that you can do on every single world. And that's you. You're that's your fault. You you fucking did this. You did this. Fans, you made all of this cool stuff. You're you're why I'm so excited about this. No, Umbra, I'm I'm making Womb of Night. Womb of Night is a whole other I don't think there's any any space. You know what? Actually, that's not true. You could play Womb of Night inside the guild sphere as a simulation of what would happen if you smoked way too much pot. That would be a thing. That's where you could get Womb of Night. Womb of Night is a guild experiment in the ancient human arts of pot smoking, taking fat bong rips, and flying around in space on a pterodactyl while you're also a wizard. That. It's that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, cool. So that's uh, that's the red dogs. Red dogs blowing up the tomb world of Bora. Uh, last but not least, in the exact opposite place from last time, coming in at 13th, down at the bottom of the order, uh, these folks are... Uh, these folks are the high church. So the high church... Uh, they're going to take the expand influence action and we'll talk about where in just a second. So the high church, uh, let's reorganize here. Uh, let's see if they have anything that gives them extra stuff. Uh, okay. Chorch, what you got? High Chorch. They got nothing. Okay. Nothing that gives them, nothing that gives them extra, nothing that takes away. So they're going to get their regular money amount. So 13, okay. And then they are going to, uh, they're going to expand their influence to build a new base of influence on, they're gonna build a five hit point base of influence, nice, on Berkman, Berkman three. So this is kind of cool. This is the first big base and it's on Berkman. So let me see who else is there. They're basically making like weird Quakers. Trilliant and the uh, Trilliant and the High Church. Trilliant and the High Church. Now I asked the Trilliant Ring, as you can see, I asked the Trilliant Ring, hey, so would it be okay for them to build this base of influence? And the Trilliant Ring was like, yep, definitely. So yeah, now there's two, two five HP. This planet is currently being shared by uh, the Trillion Ring and the Church. 
Um, yeah, it's the capitalist religion. It's interesting, yeah. So uh, let's let's go ahead and, and add that. So high, the high church. They got a base of influence that is 5 HP. And it is on Berkman. Now, what's funny about Berkman, let's talk about Planet Berkman. Um, so let's see here. Uh, cost them their five. So 13. Make sure that's eight. Okay, eight. Good. Um, so Berkman, uh, if we look at the map, yeah, it's an anarchist planet, right? It's like a, um, yeah, anarchist and great work. So there, it's like a social experiment of people who exempted themselves from the empire and were like, no, we're going to go and have our own little, like, I really do think of these people as being like tolerated uh, by the empire. Uh, and the empire probably think of, thinks of them as like, yeah, okay, like, sure, you're not part of the empire or whatever. You're just too small. Um, but now Trillion Ring and the and the church have set up bases here. It's kind of it's kind of cool. Um, yeah, I'm really interested in seeing the social experiment that happens on on Berkman and kind of where where a planet develops when it has essentially space Catholicism and hyper capitalism uh, on on board. This planet is due for some very deep, serious changes. And yeah, we all know churches love gold. I was I was joking with uh, the high church and with the Trillion Ring. They're just, yeah, they're just making churches out of, like, ivory and gold and diamonds, like flying churches. It's great. It's so good. And they hate, but the planet hates government. The planet is like, no, no, we govern ourselves. We are, we are a functional society with no centralized authority, which doesn't mean you can't be friends, right? It doesn't mean that the church and Trillion can't be, like, allies. They have bases, but you'll notice neither of them are the planetary government. That's how you get a civil war. But right now, the government is just like, listen, we have no authority, no centralized authority. We take care of ourselves. The church is welcome to be here. People are allowed to worship as they like. People are also allowed to buy things from Trulia if they want to, right? They have they have resources. All anarchy means is that there is no centralized government and uh and people take care of themselves. Now, whether the whether the Trillion Ring and the church will decide to seize this planet later or it will become a gift to the emperor on his coronation or their coronation we'll see but right now there's there, i imagine there are some aspects of the the people of berkman that are not too happy with the presence of uh, of the trillion ring and uh it's it's unseating the the current uh placid this would be this would be a pretty good place to live if it weren't for the flying golden churches and now the influence of the empire but hey, it's a TL4 planet. They got resources, which is to say people. It's a warm planet where people can live. Somehow, so far, avoided being subsumed for now. Um, it's also only one step away from, from Trillia 9 and not so far away from Cabina uh, or from Mona or from Acre. <laughs> so yeah, it's a whole, it's a whole thing. Thanks, Jordan. Yeah, it's it's cool. This is the monthly the monthly catch up of of all of the the th the thousands of players who are contributing their uh, contributing their their input. So so that I believe concludes the the turn by turn section. Uh, that concludes the turn by turn section. Uh, let's just make sure uh, that everything is good. Okay, base of influence on Berkman. We are good to go. Okay, so let's let's talk about the last thing that I needed to talk about. So um, back at the beginning, uh, back at the beginning, we built all of the we built all of the the factions. We created them. We made tags, and we built the stuff. And that was that was really before we started to see uh, the the sort of like deep shifting. Oh yeah, that's right. And sorry, the church. I owe you some experience. The church, you get your influence. So you're up to two now, right? Because there was no one to, yeah, you're good. Thanks. Thanks for the reminder. So that was, that was really like where we set out from the original goal of the, of the game where I was like, this is, oh, I gave it to the wrong church. Sorry. Sorry. Wrong church. There you go. Better fixed it. Listen, I can't tell you religious weirdos apart. Um, and so this was like a setting out point, uh, where I was like, this is what I envision the, the universe to be like, and these are your factions and go ahead and do it. Now, over the last little while, I've been keeping, a, a, obviously, a close as I as I can on the RP of the factions and how the factions see themselves and, and how, they've been, how they've been acting and kind of what they're about. And we've been learning about the mechanisms of the game, not just how they work against themselves, but how they work for us. 
My primary mandate uh, is to create an environment in which um, you you can play your faction and that it, it feels like the mechanisms as best as I can reflect that play. And in some cases, uh, I have been firm. I've said like, okay, no, you, you can't just change the planet. Those tags are randomly generated. You can't, you can't just go ahead and change those because you don't like them. You need to fictively build around them. That's my challenge to you. And that's ultimately what the game is about, right? Randomly drawn assets, uh, randomly drawn stuff from the tables, give you a prompt to say, okay, I wonder why it's like this. What is this like? How do we, how do we do, how do we build around this, right? So I don't want to change those. I'm not into changing like planetary type stuff for the most part. Um, there may be chances where I will do that or where the fiction will change it. But responding to those, those complications is my challenge to you and to myself. And I think you've all been doing a really great job. That's good. Um, now, there are, uh, there are times where I have made decisions. Uh, I've, I've made decisions about things and I've realized like, okay, maybe that doesn't make as much sense. We moved a planet to make things fit better so that we didn't break the game right? For example. So I, I moved, I moved a planet. Um, we haven't done anything to change any of the, any of the factions, because I, I think that as you're making your decisions, you want to be relying on the fact that, that these, these factions are what they say on paper. So when House Crux came to me and they said, you know, we understand why the imperialist tag fictionally fits for us because we're, we're ambitious, right? We, we believe in the empire. We want to expand. Mechanically, the imperialist tag doesn't really fit the way that Crux has shown themselves to be this sort of internal police system. Uh, the imperialist tag is really for factions that have lots of opportunity to grow and want to go out and, uh, and seize planets, which I don't really think is Crux's mandate right now. I don't think that fictionally that fits for them. Um, we've really seen that that's not kind of what they're, what they're about. And ultimately I think that there is an imperialist faction within house crux, but that's mostly me, right? I'm in control of the, the branch of crux that desperately wants to, uh, to set up, uh, uh, themselves as the emperor, that kind of thing. They don't really, yeah, they don't really seize the, the planets. So instead, I think to bend more to the idea that house crux are like the police, and or secret police, that their main mandate has been hunting down synths and that there's still work to be done. I think it's only fair that we change their tag from imperialists uh, to perimeter agency. So the perimeter agency, uh, and I need to update their, uh, let's see, I can update note for selection. There we go. So I think that it makes more sense that we treat them as a perimeter agency um, oh, did that not update the comments? Okay. Whatever, I'll do it myself. Um, so the per a perimeter agency, uh, their mandate is hunting down Maltech and, and getting rid of AI, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I don't think that this changes too much about the way that you're going to interact with each other, but let me read the tag for you just to, to make sure. So perimeter agency, is that what it's called? Yeah. I think it's not. Yeah, that's what it's called, Perimeter Agency. All right. All right, PDF. Here we go. Um, this faction is closely tied, is or is closely tied to an agency of the Enigmatic Perimeter Organization. Now we talked about like kind of getting rid of them. That that's not really in the that's not really in the in the game. Um, and I think instead, yeah. Let me let me clear the notes there. Um, Instead, this means that they are they're focused on the same thing. The Crux's job is hunting down bad guys. They're the they're space cops, and I need to empower them. Uh, I need to empower them as such. Um, so they originally organized to detect and contain Maltech outbreaks until resources could be dispatched. They maintain override protocols for pretext security, etc. So the idea here is that they're good at hunting things down and cleaning them out. And I think we've seen that being being reflected in the in the game. Mechanically, this means once per turn, they can roll an additional D10 when making an attack against an asset that requires tech level five to purchase. They can also roll an extra die when making a test to detect stealth assets. Now, I know that this is probably making the UPC and House Vagrant uh, and, and 
the red dog's nervous, but that's okay. I think it's it's much better to have some balance against all three of those factions with all their secretive behavior. I don't think that the Empire had the secret police that they would they would have. I think it makes sense to me narratively to uh to give House Crux this this ability. Um because otherwise we're just gonna get a total stealth degradation of uh, of the Empire. And I don't think that fictionally that makes sense. So uh this is how this is how this this is how this works. Um, if you if you as a uh, as a um, as a faction have something with your faction that you don't think makes sense uh, any anymore um, or never made sense or whatever, go go through your uh, go through your your faction rep. Let me know your concerns. We'll talk about it. Me and your rep, and and I'll consider it. And and. This is just a show. Like, I don't always just say, like, no. Like, I think House Crux is right. And I think mechanically and narratively this makes sense. This is a kind of uh, change that I know is significant. And I know it, it, it's meaningful for the turn. But I hope that that as the game master of the, the greater Far Verona uh, turn, uh, that, you will, uh, that you will trust me uh, to, to handle these things. Um, so, yeah. Uh, now, I will let you know that uh, this House Crux did not know that I was going to do this until the very end of this turn. Like, I never told them, yes, totally, I'm going to change your tag. They didn't know that until now. They asked me, and I said, wait until the end of the faction turn. So they got they got no advantage uh, on this. Now everyone knows they have this ability. Going forward, we'll, uh, we'll be able to, uh, to adjust accordingly. So, uh, yeah, so that's that. We're good to go. That was, that was our faction turn. Um, I think we, I think we have, we have everything else. The, the high church has asked me to take a, take a look at my, my communications here. Um, okay. Yeah. I'm not going to announce it during the stream, but definitely check, go in and, and check out, go into the, into the, the discord. This is actually a good, a good segue. So if you've been watching this and you're like, what the shit is this? Why is Adam playing with a spreadsheet? Go to my YouTube channel. If you're already on my YouTube channel, go to the beginning of this playlist and watch the very first video. I lay out exactly what we're doing here. If you would like to be a part of this, if you'd like to get involved in the politics and the chaos of the Far Verona monthly faction turn, as well as all of the other fun shit that we're doing in the Discord server, like filling in the wiki and making up cool stuff and having noble balls and, and RP events and what have you, Go to roleplay. Uh, go to the roleplay Patreon, Patreon.com/roleplay, R-O-L-L-P-L-A-Y, and you sign up for literally any amount, a dollar. A dollar will get you in, and then you can you can play. Uh, connect your Discord to the to the the Patreon account, and it'll get added. You can join a faction, and you can you can join in the fun. We've got fizzy cheese in like twenty six different flavors. They're they're waiting for you. We got them ready. So uh, I hope that you will check that out. Um, thank you as always, folks who are watching this. This is my special time with you uh getting to do the big nerd thing um and uh and i'm i'm glad that i'm glad that you're here participating uh in this with me uh thank you uh, as always for for watching uh this has been the the june faction turn um i will let you know uh faction representatives i will let you know when your uh what your order is for the next turn so you can start building your orders we'll try to do the same we'll try to do the same thing we'll do it like maybe the last friday of the month um, and that'll give you 48 hours prior to that to submit your orders. <sighs> take, take a nice long look at what's going on on Almori and think about how you might want to act in the future. Cause I think things are, things are getting heated up on the reticulum homeworld. Thanks for coming everybody. Uh, this has been uh, faction turn number two, the June faction turn. Um, I'm your space master, Adam Coble. Thank you so much for coming everybody. Have a good one.